our theme for the year and the message I want, uh, for the month and the message I want to preach on is reigniting the flame, reigniting the flame. Uh, that's the theme we are running uh, under throughout this month, reigniting the flame. And uh, I'm going to base my teaching this afternoon on the, uh, on, on the letter to Timothy, the second letter actually to Timothy by Paul. So that's where I'm going to base my uh, teaching this afternoon. And um, uh, let me begin from the beginning. Uh, 2 Timothy chapter 1 verses 1 to 2 says, uh, Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus, by the will of God, according to the promise of life that is in Christ Jesus. And then to Timothy, my dear son. So uh, this letter is written by Paul and it's being addressed to Timothy, whom he calls his son. He was not his biological son, but he was his ministry son, his spiritual son. And uh, we know the journey uh, at which uh, Paul and Timothy began this journey together. Uh, actually, in the first missionary journey of Paul, uh, you know, we read that Paul preached and he came to a city called Lystra. And uh, at Lystra, there Paul began to preach and there was someone who was um, paralyzed and was listening to Paul while preaching in his first missionary journey. And the Bible says in the book of Acts that Paul looked at, at him and, and realized that that person had faith to be healed. And the Bible says, and Paul commanded him to rise up and walk. And, and, and that day, uh, that person was healed. And uh, some people got converted on that day, which I believe those among the converts on that first missionary journey included Timothy. And Timothy was not alone. He was staying with the mother and the grandmother, whom we know from the scriptures that she was called Lois. And the father of, Dimo of Timothy was, uh, was, was Greek. So that is some of the background stories about Timothy. Now, but in his second missionary journey, Paul uh, uh, decided to go back to visit uh, the churches and the people he had preached to in his first missionary journey. And he comes back to Lystra, and uh, the Bible says when he came to Lystra, the brethren there, that is in Lystra and Iconium, uh, talked so well about a young man who was called Timothy. And they told uh, Paul, there is a young man here who is on fire. And Paul was so much interested, and he meets Timothy. And uh, after meeting Timothy, the Bible says, and Paul was so interested and decided to take him to, uh, on his uh, missionary journey. And they go with Timothy. They went down to Macedonia. They went down to Philippi and Thessalonica and Corinth. And they planted the, the churches, which we now know uh, to be in Spain and in Europe. Okay? So that was the journey of, uh, of Timothy and Paul. But after some time, after Paul had established different assemblies, Timothy was sent by Paul to go back to Ephesus, to go there and become the first pastor in that church. Okay? So uh, Timothy becomes a pastor in Ephesus. And not only does Timothy become a pastor in Ephesus, uh, the Bible says, uh, and Timothy... Uh, not even the Bible. Uh, we have some extra uh, extra information or extra sources tell us that Timothy ended up becoming the first the first bishop of the church in Ephesus. So that is the story of Timothy and Paul. And so um, there is something special we 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 want to to look at even at the introduction about the very church which Timothy became the bishop at, or he was leading as the bishop, and that is the church in Ephesus. Now, in the book of Revelation, we have uh, a message to this church. Uh, this was after a long time. Uh, you know, Timothy probably had died by that time, and so John, the revelator, writes to this church in, in, in Ephesus, and that we find it in the book of Revelations chapter 2 and verses 1 down to verses 5. So 
So, um, so the Lord is speaking to this church called uh, Ephesus at this time. Now, by this time, I think Timothy uh, had passed on and um, we still had uh, John, whom I believe they were almost age mates, but uh, John lived a little bit longer than, than Timothy. Now, in Revelation chapter 2, verses 1, we, 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 we read uh, the message the Bible says, and this is the message to the church in Ephesus. And Ephesus, we now know, is the very church which Timothy was the pastor in. It's the very church where Timothy was the pastor in. Now, God speaks about good things about this church. God says how they have uh, been able to withstand the hard times. God congratulates them how they were able to identify some false prophets in those days. How they were able to hold on to faith. But however, in verses 4, the Bible says, yet I hold this against you. Yet I hold this against you. You know, and, and that is always common at times, you know, uh, in psychology, uh, when you hear somebody praising you, and then you find the word and but, then you know you are being prepared to be slaughtered. And so, the Bible says, and the Bible says, and yet I hold this against you. And what was the very thing that the Lord God Almighty was holding this church against? The Bible says, and you have forsaken your first love. You have forsaken your first love. Now, and God tells them in verses 5, remember the height from which you are fallen. Remember the very place of which you are fallen. And he's telling them where you are right now is not where you used to be. Now, what does this really mean? Is actually God is telling the church, I need you to rekindle the flame of, of love again. God is telling them, I want you to come back again to the very place and to the very things you used to do. So, and God tells them, repent and do the things which you first uh, did. So, and that is where we are as the church today. When we are talking about rekindling the flame, we are talking about going back to the very things we used to do when we got saved. To the very things we used before, we used to do even before COVID. The very things you used to do uh, at some time, but right now you're not doing. So it's a call and it's a message to, for, uh, to the church that the church ought to come back to its first love. Can we say amen? Can we say a big amen? amen. Yes. We need to come back again. We need to come back to our first love. You know, when I got saved, I remember uh, we were really on fire, you know? Uh, those days I was in high school, and I remember there was a day I was coming from, from school, and uh, we met here in town with a sister. Uh, that lady used to study in another high school, but we knew each other. And you know, those were the days. Eldoret was small. We had very few people. We would just look across the street and see all the people, and you know some. And uh, I remember one day I was just around Korosiot, around that area, and I didn't so realize that this sister had seen me. And uh, you know, as always as you're walking in, on the streets, and guess uh, what happened? This lady just stands still on the street, and she wails and says, wow, my, 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 my brother is here. And she comes running and jumps on me. That is how crazy we used to be. You know, those were the days we had love, you know, the brotherly love. And as a preacher one time told us here, yeah, we, we need to qualify and describe what kind of love we're talking about here. We're talking about the love of Christ, okay? So, um, so God is calling this child to, to go back to his first love. But now also there is a message specifically, not only to the church, but there is a message specifically to Timothy. 
And uh, that is 2 Timothy chapter 1, verses 6 to 7. Let's go there. It says, For this reason I remind you to, uh, to fan into flame the gift of God, which, uh, which is in you through the laying on of my hands. Uh, for God did not give us a spirit of timidity, but a spirit of power, of love, and of self-discipline. Now, the first message was to the entire church, but the second message here is specifically to Timothy. Okay? Now, as you're talking about rekindling the flame, we have some things we have to do corporately as the church of Christ, but there are also things which each one of us is called to rekindle in his or our own life. So, in this place, Timothy is being told, kindly rekindle the flame of ministry, the, the flame and the gift of God in your life, which was, uh, which, which, which was confirmed through the laying on of the hands of Paul and the elders in, in Ephesus. So, um, and that is very important. Each one of us have a gift. Each one of us have a space. Each one of us have something to do uh, that we need in the body of Christ. So as we are talking right now, you need to think through some of the things you used to do individually. Some of the commitments you used to have. You know, how you used to commit yourself to prayer. How you used to commit yourself to the fellowship of, uh, uh, of believers. How you used to come in here for the Wednesday meetings and the uh, home church meetings and any other meetings here in town. So uh, there is that place that we need to rekindle that flame individually. Now, there are a number of things which Paul uh, specifically instructed, instructed Timothy to rekindle. There are some things he reminded Timothy to do. And the first thing uh, which I want to, to, to uh, highlight is that uh, Paul is telling Timothy to reignite the flame of brotherly love, uh, uh, of brotherly fellowship and care. He's telling Timothy, please rekindle the, the, the flame of brotherly love and care. So um, that we find in 2 Timothy. Let's go to 2 Timothy chapter 4 and verses 9 to 20, uh, to verses 9 and 12. Paul is writing to Timothy and he's telling him this. Do your best to come quickly to me. For Demas, because he loved this world has deserted me and has gone to Thessalonica. Crescens has gone to Galatia and Titus to Dalmatia. Only Luke is with me. Get Mark and bring him with you because he's helpful to me in, in my ministry. Now, Paul is telling Timothy, please you need to rekindle the place of Brotherly love and care and fellowship. And he's telling Timothy, please come to me quickly. Don't hesitate. Yes, yes, you know that word. Don't do that. Just come quickly. And Timothy, Paul is saying, the reason why he's calling uh, Timothy to come, he's telling him because there is a man called Demas who has deserted uh, Paul. You know, Paul was writing this letter while he was incarcerated in prison he, uh, he, in, in Rome. He was, he was in a prison house. You know, this time he was chained, actually. He was not like, uh, he was not in a house, but he was actually chained. In his first imprisonment, Tim, uh, Paul had been put only to stay in a house and he would be able to move around Rome and even do ministry. But in his second um, imprisonment, you know, Paul was actually chained. And um, this was during the reign of Emperor Nero. And he, this was actually the last time because after this, Paul was actually, um, he was killed. He was, he was killed because of preaching the gospel. So he's telling Timothy, please come quickly. Come quickly. I am in chains. I am I'm struggling. I'm being deserted by some brethren here. And he says, 
please uh, come with Mark and you also know the beef which uh, Paul had with, uh, with Mark. You remember that? That is in Acts chapter 15. You remember there was a time, you know, Paul said, I don't want Mark in my team. You know, at times you guys look at pastors and, and ministers that you think they cannot do some crazy things. Look here. You know, Paul said, I'm not going with Mark. And Barnabas, you know, the name Barnabas means an encourager. You know, Barnabas was more of a pastor. Barnabas said, no, please, Paul, let's go with him. But Paul said, no, this guy did not go with us the first time. But this time now, we're not going with him. And the Bible says the contentions were so sharp. And uh, to an extent, Paul and Barnabas are to part ways just because of Mark. But look here now. In this time, Paul is telling Timothy, come with who? Come with Mark. The very person he had said, I don't need in my ministry, he says, this man is profitable now to my ministry. Can we say amen? There are people maybe you, you, you parted with. You say, this one pastor, please don't bring this pastor to our safari groups. But it is now time to write a letter and say, kindly bring him on. Bring him on because he's beneficial not only to you, but he's also beneficial to my ministry. It is time to reignite the flame of fellowship. Some of us, you might have been hurt in one way or another, but I want to tell you the truth. We don't have to live that way forever. There comes a time you say, please call for me, Mark. Call for me that man I rejected. Call for me that man we differed by in opinion. Can we say amen? No, we are not enemies, surely. I think our politicians in Kenya have shown us the way. There is no politician in Kenya who has never worked with the other one. Tell me today, I'm not a political scientist, but I'm just an observer. All these guys, they can shout on top and say all the things, but after that, they just say you are my comrade. But for us, we, at times, we take it to heart, and our, our governor told us, let's not put politics in our heart, let's put it in our lungs. At times, we have very sharp and strong positions we take against our brethren. Surely, there is this man, Paul, they differed with Mark, but there came a time Paul writes and says, please make sure you bring Mark. Though we differed the other time, today I need him. He's so beneficial to me and my ministry. So the very people we had differed with, it's time to rekindle the flame of brotherly love, fellowship, and care for one another. Amen. Now, the second thing is we need to reignite the flame of evangelism. 2 Timothy chapter 4 and verses 5. But you, uh, but you keep your head in all situations. But you keep your head in all situations and do a hardship. Do the work of an evangelist. Discharge all the duties of your ministry. Now this is a call to reignite the flame of evangelism. Paul is telling Timothy here that, yes, you have a primary ministry, and which we find in this place, he's telling him, discharge the duties of your ministry. But Paul is telling Timothy here, do the work of an evangelist. Now, uh, let, let's, let's look at grammar here. There is a difference when someone tells you, do the work of an evangelist, and when someone tells you, be an evangelist. So here, Paul is not telling Timothy to become an evangelist. But he's telling Timothy here to do the work of an evangelist. As much as Timothy was a pastor, as much as Timothy was a bishop, you know, but Paul is telling him he has to do the work of an evangelist. 
And that applies to all of us here today. You can say, Pastor, I am not an evangelist. I can only give money to an evangelist. No. The Bible is telling us to do the work of an evangelist. If you believe it, say amen. amen. We have to do the work of an evangelist. And there are some facts about evangelism I want to look at here. There are some facts about evangelism I want to look at here. So that we, we, we get to understand uh, what Paul is actually telling Timothy in this particular scripture. Okay, some facts about evangelists. The first fact is this. Not all of us are evangelists. Not all of us are evangelists. That is a fact. You can say I'm not an evangelist. I'm a teacher. I am a prophet. I am this or the other thing. I'm an administrator. I am this. I, 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 I give, I show love and mercy. And I have other gifts as we know uh, from the scriptures. But here, uh, the Bible tells us it's true. We are not all called to be evangelists. But all of us have been called to do the work of an evangelist. That is so important. Regardless your primary call and ministry is, all of us have been called to do the work of an evangelist. And that is what God expects from each and every one of us. You cannot say, uh, Pastor, I'm a teacher, I am this, I'm the other thing, I'm a businessman, so my gift is not to do evangelism. evangelism. Here we realize that Paul is telling Timothy that he's got to do the work of an evangelist. And while we are doing the work of an evangelist, we should not neglect our primary uh, ministries and calling. You know, you could be Called like Timothy, he was a, a pastor. Uh, you know, Paul tells him, yes, again, make sure you fulfill the duties of your ministry. So that is so important for us as a church. And in this time of missions, uh, one of the key pillars in our, our strategic plan and in CITAM is, 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 is outreach, missions and outreach. And the objective of our missions and outreach in CITAM is to equip each one of us to do evangelism. And that is anchored in the scripture. That all of us have been called to do the work of an evangelist. Uh, of an evangelist. Amen. Now, the second uh, area Paul is telling Timothy to reignite is to reignite the flame of public reading of scripture. Uh, to reignite the flame of public reading of scripture. Um, yes, uh, this we find in 1 Timothy chapter 4 and verse 13. And uh, Paul writes to Timothy and tells him, Until I come, devote yourself to public reading of scripture, to preaching and teaching. This is so important. Now, he's telling Timothy to reignite this flame. He's telling Timothy to, to, to do uh, uh, the, 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 the work of public reading of scripture. That is so important. Uh, I don't know why Paul had to stress the fact that it has to be public. Yes, I know you've been doing your own private reading, but here Paul is saying, do a public uh, uh, act of reading the scriptures. In your office, wake up before the manager uh, and your CEO stands, just say, uh, uh, please, I have something to say. So you always ask if you have anything to say. So say, I have something to say. And then you say, there is a scripture in my heart. Can we say, amen? <laughs> uh, now you say, pastor, you're now becoming, uh, is it called fanatical? Is it a fanatic? Yeah. Just to wake up and say, I have a scripture. I read this, this day. And it blessed my heart. So Paul is telling Timothy, do not be ashamed in public reading of scripture. And this is what I'm charging all of us today here. Let us not be ashamed to read to public reading of scripture. And I say it in the morning, uh, it's, it was very interesting to look at our Supreme Court 
how our charges would, would could quote the scripture. There was, you know, the famous Solomonic, uh, what was it called? Wisdom, you know? How they would quote and then the judge says, you did not quote it well. Let me quote it well for you and put it in context. That was done in public. No, we should not be ashamed to read the scriptures in public. Can we say amen for that? So kindly please, let's rekindle that flame. In our homes, we have our, our prayer, uh, pulle, uh, what is that now? The call engine is coming out. Bulletin. The prayer bulletin we have for our children. You know, in the bulletin, we are asked to pray and to read the scriptures with our children. Okay? So kindly please, fathers and mothers, during this time, just stand up and say, I have a reading. We want to read the scriptures. So we need to encourage and to reignite the flame of public reading of scripture. Now, uh, I just want to finish with just some three things and I'll be done. What is our current call then? Now, we've looked at the, the, the areas which Paul was telling Timothy to reignite. Some areas Paul was telling Timothy, please take care of this. But what is our current call as an assembly, as individuals, and as the church? Our first call, which I think God is calling us to, is the call to go to the highway and byways and bring the people and bring people to the house of God. That is our call. You could be telling me, Pastor, I don't know how to preach. I don't know all this. But there is a call. There is something God is telling us as individuals and as a congregation. We need to go out there to the highways and to the byways and bring people into the house of God. And that we find in the book of Luke chapter 14, verses 22 to verses 23. Uh, this is a parable which Jesus gave about someone who organized a banquet and invited people to come for this banquet. But Jesus says... That uh, the people who had been invited for the banquet did not turn up. Instead, they gave out excuses and said, I'm not coming because of this or the other thing. And the master said to the servants, now go out now that the original invited guests have not come. Please go out yourselves now and gather people, uh, the people who are lame and all those who are in difficulties and all that. Just to bring them in. So that uh, I may have guests in my, in my banquet. Uh, and the Bible says the servants went the first time and brought people and the place was really almost full. And the servant now tells Jesus in this verses 22 and tells Jesus, Sir, uh, the servant said, what you ordered has been done, but there is still room. You know, we have gone, we have brought people, but there is still room. And Jesus tells, not Jesus, the master tells the servant, go out to the roads and to the country lands and make them come in so that my house will be full. Can all of us say, that is the will of God. The will of God is to have his house full. And who is to do this work? Each one of us should go out to the highways, to the byways, and wherever, and bring them in so that the house of God may be full. That is the call of God on each and every one of us here today. Can we shout hallelujah? Yes. You know, it's so strange. I said in the morning that Sitam, uh, through the deacon board, Put for us such a nice facility. And uh, they gave us chairs. You know, you can even hit three or four if you want. And you won't finish. We have more than enough room here. Not only room do we have. We have chairs. When you look behind there, we have about a thousand chairs that are just heaped on each other. Do you think God is happy with that? No. There are assemblies in our villages and other places they always do a fundraiser to have one chair. We know you people. You know, you think we don't know you. We are prophets. We know that you have Sitam as your town church, but you have your local church. 
And always, you always get an SMS, please, we are fundraising for a chair. But here we have more than enough. But now the master is saying, please, I have set a banquet. Go out there and call on men. Bring them in so that my house may be full. Are we able to do that, brethren? Yes, we can go out. And that way we want to go out to our friends. We want to go out to our offices. We want to go out to our siblings. We want to call them and bring them in into the house of God. Now, the other second thing which God is calling us to is that God is calling us to reach out to each other in brotherly love. That is what God is calling us. God is speaking to you and me and is telling us, please, come out. Come out to one another. Let's come together in brotherly love. And let's read that in the book of 1, 2 Timothy, sorry, chapter 1, verse 16 and 18. 2 Timothy, chapter 16 and verses 18. The Bible says, uh, this is Paul writing again to Timothy and he's telling him about a gentleman who are so kind and so concerned uh, to, uh, with the needs and, and the sufferings which Paul was going through. Uh, and he says this, May the Lord show mercy to the household of, Onesi, of Onesiphorus. You know, uh, I said this morning that uh, for those who are still giving birth, kindly please, there is a good name here for you. Uh, just call your child now Onesi. Honesty for us. And if you don't like the name you have, uh, please go out there and swear an affidavit and change your name to Honesty. Yes, and today I was also baptized Reverend Honesty for us. Okay? So Honesty for us was so uh, kind to Paul. And Paul says, may the Lord remember and show mercy to his household. I really pray that this becomes your testimony. That you have so much refreshed the brethren until the brethren in their secret place would pray and say, oh God, may you have mercy and show kindness to so and so. This is a man. And so God is calling all of us to be like honesty for us. And Paul writes and says, because he has refreshed me and was not ashamed of my chains. Yes. On the contrary, when he was in Rome, he searched hard for me until he found me. And Paul continues to say, May the Lord grant that he will find mercy from the Lord on that day. And Paul continues to say, You know very well in how many ways he helped me in Ephesus. This is honesty for us. He was a brother who knew his place in encouraging and meeting the needs of the brethren. Brethren, we are being called to this. Can we say amen? We are being called to this. You have to reach out to one another. When someone is suffering, when someone is in problems, kindly let's reach out to one another. The last thing is this. We have a call to be actively, uh, to be part, uh, to be active, to be actively part of a small group uh, fellowship. And these, I've said, these are our safari groups, these are our affinity groups, and these are our Bible clubs for our children. And so boys and girls in the house, uh, we are planning to, to, to reignite uh, you know, our Bible clubs. Uh, we realize that our safari groups is mainly meant for the adults. But our children who form part of our safari groups at times are neglected. And so in Sitam we have uh, an outreach arm uh, and a fellowship arm for our children which is called Bible clubs. And so in all our safari groups we want to reignite the place of Bible clubs. I want to read a scripture on that from the book of Hebrews chapter 3 verses 12 to 13 as I even come close to the end. The scripture says here, see to it, brothers, that none of you has a sinful and believing heart that turns away from the living God. That's very interesting. Paul is telling the church in, 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 
the, the, the church, the Hebrews church, who are actually mainly Jews, is telling them that see to it that it's our duty, it's the duty of each one of us to make sure that none of us has a sinful and believing heart that turns away from the Lord. That is our duty. We have to look and to be our brother's keeper. If someone is turning away from the faith, we've got to notice that. Now, verse 13 says, Instead, but encourage one another daily, as long as it is called today. That is the place of fellowship. We've got to encourage one another every day. And that is why we come to church. That is why we have the fellowship of believers. Because by so doing, we encourage one another. Now, and the Bible says this should be a daily activity. We have to do this every day. And uh, the reason why we have to do it daily, the Bible says here, so, so that none of you may be hardened by the sin's deceitfulness. That is now the danger of running away from the fellowship of brethren. When you run away from the fellowship of brethren, the Bible says here, you will, your heart will be hardened through the deceitfulness of sin. And so we need to rekindle, to reignite this flame of brotherly love, this uh, uh, fire of being part of fellowships. And so we're calling to all of us, please, kindly please be part of one's or the other small group. And that way we're going to, to grow up. Let me bring this to the close now. And uh, my conclusion is Ephesians chapter 5 verses 14. Which is our theme scripture for the month. And it says, this is why it is said. The reason why we are saying, reignite the flame in your life. This is why it is said. This is why it's written in the scripture. The Bible says, wake up O sleeper. Rise from the dead and Christ will shine on you. That is what God is telling us. That we arise from the sleep. And the Bible says, rise from the dead. Why the dead? You know, the Bible says, uh, we were dead in our trespasses. In this scripture, God is sleep addressing both the believers and the believers. You know, some of us could be here. You are not born again. The Bible says you are dead in your sins. But Christ is here to resurrect you. The Bible says when we are sleeping, Jesus is here to revive us. And the Bible says, and Christ will shine on you. I say the Lord bless you so much. And may he reignite the flame of God in your life. <laughs>